Volleyball on BTN, presented by Tachikara. Tonight, we've got a terrific one. Number 11, Nebraska, hosting number 12, UCLA. And hello again, everyone. I'm Larry Putney, along with Audrey Flaw. Great to have you with us tonight here from the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. Two teams who traditionally are at the top of the rankings, UCLA and Nebraska. But Nebraska going with a bit of youth this year. UCLA, they've got a terrific senior coming back for her final year. Yeah, Riley Bushler, she is poised and confidence has started all the matches here for UCLA, not just this year, but in her career. She has a left side, powerful swing, and she plays six rotations. All-American talent will definitely be tracking her numbers tonight. Absolutely a transition year for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They lose the twins, Katie and Amber Ergon. Justine wong has moved on to Team USA, trying to fill some very big holes. And they're going to look to Michaela Fecky to get that done. Yeah, Michaela Fecky is starting off her junior season with the Huskers in her typical way, getting big numbers and being that leader on the floor. Cook has asked her to step up, be a six rotation player, so she's gonna be in serve receive. We'll see how she handles that difficult role. Volleyball tonight on BTN, we've got a great one. Two top 15 teams. It's Nebraska and UCLA from Lincoln. Back in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Bob Devaney Sports Center, where tonight John Cook and his Huskers ranked number 12 nationally will take on the 11th ranked UCLA Bruins, who have not lost in the year, coming in at 5-0 out of the Pac-10. Let's take a look at the starting lineups then for the Bruins. The senior, we mentioned her off the top, Riley Bushler, the outside hitter from Del Mar, California. Mac May, just a freshman, another freshman, and Ginny Moser. Kyra Rogers, Madeline Gates, Sarah Sponsel. The starting lineups for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Tonight, Michaela Fecky, the junior, will lead the way on the outside along with Annika Albright. Senior Brianna Holman in the middle along with the freshman Lauren Stevens. Sidney Townsend will be in the back row as the DS. And Kelly Hunter getting the start tonight as Nebraska moves out of that 6-2 that they've been playing in in the last two weekends to a more true 5-1. They're going to test the shoulder tonight of Kelly Hunter to see how that responds over the last week. Yeah, absolutely. Kelly Hunter, the captain, floor leader on the court. The offense will look pretty crisp if she is playing at 100%. She's been starting every year here for Nebraska, a standout player. There's a look at John Cook in his 18th season, just two games ago, picked up his 500th career win at Nebraska. Now a career record of 502 and 67. The Huskers will start it off. Serving the back row, Annika Albright. Pushed outside. Kept alive for the Huskers. Fecky with a roll shot in the middle. Terrific pancake up, keeping it alive. Tip shot, but Fecky is there. Stedman's in the middle with a nice touch shot. Stedman finds the open floor. Nebraska up early. Let's take a look at Michael Seeley. Michael's in his eighth season overall, 169 and 65. Former UCLA grad, played for the Bruins back in the mid-90s, was a terrific setter, one of the top setters in UCLA history. Won his national championship, co-captain, over the pass, and Fecky puts it down, but kept alive. Free ball here for Nebraska. Hunter will push out to Fecky. Up, no, 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 no. Off the block, Nebraska up early here, two zip. Well, Fecky doing a really good job there of exploiting a block that wasn't formed perfectly. The middle blocker for UCLA reaching out to the pin. Fecky being that veteran outside, see those hands and just wipes the ball off. On the slide goes cross court. One hand by Townsend cannot keep it alive. And the kill by the middle for the Bruins, Madeline Gates. UCLA can pass well. Madeline Gates will be very effective tonight. Really quick on that slide to that right pin. It's all back to serve now for the Bruins is the junior libero, Zana Muno. You know, having a terrific season, averaging better than five digs per set. Just terrific numbers for Muno. And there's another one right there, the pancake up. Into the net called on the Bruins, point for the Huskers. Well, this is where some of those little errors will come back to haunt you. UCLA does get that pancake, but turns into an overpass, which results in an easy point for Nebraska. So here's Kinsey Maloney now to serve for Nebraska. Small task for Maloney. All she has to do is replace <laughs> Justine Wong Arantes, the 
former All-American for the Huskies, now playing on Team USA. Pushed outside. All right there. Quick run in the middle. And there is Nebraska's senior middle, Brianna Holman, with the kill. And Brianna Holman does an exceptional job there of cutting the ball back. Look at this defensive play roll shot, easily handled by Nebraska. And then that cut shot goes off the blocker's hands. Nice point for Nebraska. Really, Aubrey can't understate the importance of having Kelly Hunter back. Certainly, the future is bright for Hunter Atherton, who stepped in in her place. But having a senior out there and her absence over the first two weeks and even absence in practice because of that shoulder injury that she had has been, has been really detrimental to the improvement of this Husker team. Right, and when your leader goes down, it, there's just an emotional void on the court. And so everybody here is happy to see Kelly Hunter uh, leading the offense for the Huskers. She really pushed her hard this week during practice. She set almost exclusively on the A side with Nebraska just to see how that shoulder would respond. She's out there, as Cook said earlier this week, not sure she can go back-to-back -back nights, so you never know, you may see the 6-2 back tomorrow night or even yet this evening, depending on how it responds. And there's a big response from Fecky on the outside. On the slide, here's Holman off the block, running up by Muno. Well, that's what they've seen all year out of Muno. Back row attack, Monica Albright with the kill. Monica Albright, crowd loves her and I love her. She is a great all-round player and this year she's swinging from the back court. You're going to see her swinging from the front court, but look at that hit. Right to the right back corner, going deep perimeter. Love that shot. Albright, somebody who came into Nebraska expecting to always be maybe a back row player, but she really developed her offense to the point where now she's a six rotation player. She's been there early on. Look the captain this year. Aggressive swing by Mac May. Nebraska's block is there. First time we've called Mac May's name. She's an outstanding freshman for the Bruins. Another look at that swing in the block by the Huskers. Yeah, Mac May's going to be facing this huge block all night. So she's going to have to try to find some shots here. Or maybe her setter, uh, Sponsel, will find a way to get her one-on-one. -on -one, maybe move her around a little bit in that serve receive pattern. Jazz sweet with the swing from that right side. They'll go the other way. Tip try. Sweet with good coverage. Here's Fecky, pushes it off the hands, kept alive. And we push the other side by Ginny Moser. And Moser, the freshman out of Lakeville, Minnesota, with a kill. Well, this is a great shot for a freshman. She sees the hands, tries to do something with the ball, decides to tip it at the last minute, push it off the block. So very great composed shot there by Mosher. Serve now from Mac May. Touch from Jazz Sweet, and there's a look at Sweet, the lefty, swinging from the left-handed side. Right, so when she is playing that left front position on serve received, she's going to have to swing from that left pin. The ball's going to have to cross her body in order for her to swing. That time, she tried to get her feet around it. Ball was under set a little bit managed to score on a tip shot. How difficult is that for a lefty to swing from the left-hand side? Well, it depends. I've seen a few very good left-handed players have absolutely no problem swinging from that left pin. It just depends on if the setter can push that ball all the way out and what kind of shots that lefty has. Right now, Sweet is probably developing those shots from that left pin. A uh, tremendous athlete, so we'll see if she can step up her game with that left pin on server seat. There's Ani Albright with the kill for Nebraska. Huskers take the 8-4 lead here in set one. Here's a look at Haley Dinsberger for Nebraska. She's just a freshman, defensive specialist out of Malcolm, Nebraska. Aggressive swing off the block and the kill by Bushler. Back in now to serve for UCLA comes Savvy Simo. Simo, defensive specialist, sophomore. Primarily defensive specialist and a serve specialist. Hunter pushes to Albright off the block. Good tip to keep it alive. Oh, 
Little misconnection there between Hunter and the freshman Lauren Stiverns. Well, you can imagine being out of the uh, practice rotation for a while. That rhythm between the setter and middle is going to be off a little bit. So I know Kelly Hunter is going to be upset that she didn't connect with her middle, but that will come with time. Bushler with the big block and UCLA right back in this at 8-7. Well, watch this young lady get up. That swing block technique, forehands reaching over, but the block was all Bushler there. Stiverance. When Nebraska's in system and they can get the middles, it will be, they'll be so much more effective. Stiffers a good-looking freshman. Yeah, a better rhythm there between the setter and the middle. And then when she's one-on-one, -on -one, going for the edges of the hands is always the way to go as a middle attacker. On the slide, another kill for Madeline Gates. I'll tell you what, I am impressed early on here by Sarah Sponsel, the setter for UCLA. She's doing a good job of moving forward, setting the ball back. Doesn't have a ton of experience ah. as a setter, and yet you would never know it. Great hands, great feet. Sponsel, the transfer from Loyola Marymount, where she spent the first three years of her career as an outside hitter, almost exclusively an outside hitter, didn't have much time setting at all. And here she is after the transfer of their top setter. That's right, and you can see her calling the plays for her team and just playing with a ton of confidence. Real nice to see. Good solo block there by Kelly Hunter. Then on the tip try, coverage provided there. By Townsend, Nebraska doesn't get it down. Still alive for the Bruins. Nice job defensively by both squads out of the back row. The swing, and the attack error gives the point to Nebraska. Well, Maloney really saved that point. The libero for Nebraska making a great dig, getting her platform low to the ground, popping that ball up so they could do a transition attack that ended up scoring. So good job by Kenzie Maloney, the libero for Nebraska. Kill on the left side, there's Mac May, a freshman from Dubuque, Iowa. Out of that terrific Dubuque Wallet program. I'll take a look at how deep she starts her approach, and then she elevates so well. Mac May is 6'3", so not only does she jump well, but she just has a great frame. And there you see her blocking that ball, too. So good job, not only as an offensive player, but seals the net defensively as well. She had a terrific outing against 20th ranked Hawaii a weekend or two ago. 18 kills, nine digs, three aces. Stiverns on the slide. Well, Stiverns is showing her versatility. Ran a couple plays in front, now running a slide. 6'4 kid, so wow, great size for volleyball. Yeah. Down the line, right at McKenzie. Maloney couldn't handle it. And that was Kyra Rogers for UCLA. And the tempo of the offense for UCLA is very quick. So the key thing for both of these teams is the team can stay in system more often than the opponent. They can run a fast offense. It will be to the team's advantage. We're seeing great swings here on both sides of the net. Good up there by Muno. On the slide, Holman got a touch and a kill. Brianna Holman, another one of those seniors that will be looked at for leadership in a very young Nebraska team. Of course, she transferred from UCLA two years ago, sat out her first year. The year that Nebraska won the national title, she sat and watched from the bench, then came back last year, and along with Rolfson, created a terrific set of middle blockers for Nebraska. Huskers like what they have with this set of middle blockers as well with the freshman Stiblins. Open swing, 
And that kill from the left side by Moser had a one-on-one, -on -one and she did not miss that advantage. Now, and right now, Nebraska is going after number 14 on serve receive, Mac May, the freshman. But she has responded beautifully, takes that platform right to target, and Nebraska, or I'm sorry, UCLA in system on that serve receive pattern. A good serve there by May. Nebraska in system, got it to Holman, who could not terminate. Swing wide, no touch. And the Huskers up by three at 15 12. A tight one here early on. 11th right UCLA, number 12, Nebraska. UCLA fans made the trip here to Lincoln, Nebraska for this showdown. Crystal and Robert May. It wasn't too far of a trip for them. They're, they live in Dubuque, Iowa. Their daughter, Mac May, part of that terrific Dubuque Wallert program. In fact, Mac May actually camped here at Nebraska two or three times during her high school years. So many of these terrific volleyball players go to camps all over the country. This right. happened to be a, a close one for the Mays. That's right. And uh, I know that Nebraska tried to get her to come. <laughs> Uh, so they could have, have easily been wearing a red shirt right now, but they decided UCLA was the place for their daughter. Mac May doing an outstanding do job her freshman year with the Bruins. We saw Crystal and Robert there, May's parents. There's Jazz Sweet, just a freshman, the future right side for this Husker squad. Yeah, Jess Sweet being a lefty, this is her strong side, but look at the gaping hole in that block. She sees the court and goes for that cross court shot where there was lots of open space for her to hit at. Michael May takes a timeout after Nebraska out of that last timeout, rattles off two straight points, including, as you said, a great open attack for Janesha or Jazz Sweet. I think it might be the best name in collegiate volleyball. <laughs> Although, I think number four for ne Nebraska, Sammy Slaughter, I would say that's a pretty good name too. The uh, the radio broadcasters that follow this Nebraska team, they're gonna have fun over the next few years. Oh. Sweet and Slaughter. Sweet Slaughter, yep. BTN has you covered for the return of Big Ten play in America's best conference. We kick it off September 20th with Northwestern at Purdue. Then on the 22nd, one of the Big Ten's best rivalries is renewed. These Huskers take on Penn State. Catch the return of Big Ten play on BTN starting September 20th. It's just going to be another terrific year in the Big Ten conference. Eight teams in the top 25 right now. It's uh, another loaded year in the Big Ten. Yeah, we talk about how from top to bottom this conference is just so tough. Week in and week out, you've got to bring your A game. And right now, being preseason, we're getting a chance to see some other conferences. But right. take a look at that ABCA poll. Minnesota number one. They've got a tough test this weekend, taking on Texas. Serve kept alive off the scorer's table. Hunter with the quick to Holman. Nice job keeping it alive again. We see Muno back there. Well, unfortunately, yeah, it was a, a double contact on that third contact that was an attempt to set the ball over the net. It was a great first dig, second dig, and then third dig was, or third contact was sloppy for UCLA. 3-0 run right now for Nebraska. Off the antenna, the kill by Bushler. Off the touch and the antenna, so point to the Bruins. Well, Nebraska knows that that ball is going to go outside to Bushler, but Bushler's experience, her confidence, she just swings hard and high, and that allows her to score. What a great thumb down, wrist away by Jazz Sweet, found the opening on the kill. Yeah, that's an impressive swing. She elevates so well, and what she does when the ball's in the air is vital. That ball is being passed to the setter. She's coming all the way deep past that 10-foot line and then explodes in on her approach. Sweet this year hitting 343 on the year through her first five collegiate matches. Stiverins right 
off the side of the hands of Gates and another kill for Stiverance. It's been a couple times that Stiverance has taken the ball and wiped it to the right side of UCLA's court. So we'll see if UCLA makes any adjustment, maybe force her to hit to the left back corner, see if she's able to do that. Big solo block. Jazz sweet. No blocking seems to be the skill that most freshmen struggle with. Jazz sweet. There's no struggle here. She lines up perfectly and then presses to the middle of the court. That's a big point for Nebraska. Take a look again. Swing blocking, reaching out, then back in. Her team celebrates. That's a wonderful block by Jazz Sweet. Bruins will take the timeout. Nebraska four away from set number one here in Lincoln. Still in set number one here in Lincoln. UCLA trailing Nebraska 21-13. Huskers jumped out to the quick start, have not looked back. Jumping out to that eight point lead. Huskers hitting 294 here in set number one. UCLA struggling, hitting under 100, just 94. And you see why they're with that pass on serve receive. It's gonna be critical for them to clean that up if they wanna try to compete here with the Huskers. Albright gets the kill there, her fourth kill here in set number one on five swings. Check out four kills on six swings without an error for Albright on the left side, hitting 667. Clearly her best set of the year. Out of the back row, rolled shot by Fecky is not find the floor. Nebraska's block is there. Good coverage by the Bruins to keep it alive. And that was just pushed off the block. Another smart play by the freshman, Moser. Well, the rally was extended there, which was nice to see the play going back and forth. Some big saves on UCLA's side of the net to keep the ball alive. You can see how that ball goes off Albright's hands and out of bounds. Two really good looking freshmen on the Bruins side and Moser and May. Sweet out of system. Muno keeps it alive. There's a swing by Sponsor to center. They get a touch, no touch for Nebraska. You know, it's pretty interesting and should be noted where the libero for UCLA is playing right now. She's playing right back, and you don't typically see that on the Nebraska side of the net. Maloney plays left back. So right now, just a strategic way of playing defense around the block. UCLA putting that libero in the right back corner. Complements the block that they're throwing up as well. Joust at the net there, back and forth. Both teams trying to get in system and finally put down by Bush. You know, there's something about uh, learning how to play ugly. <laughs> and it's really something that teams train because not all the time is it going to look crisp. And in that particular rally, you can see, hey, you just got to keep the ball alive in third contact, try and get the most aggressive swing you can get on it. That's exactly what that rally was. So service error will bring it to their feet here in Lincoln. Nebraska looking to take set number one, leading it here 24-15. Quick substitution coming in for Nebraska, our first look at Aneshka Zabo. And now Hunter Atherton is in. So welcome in here to Lincoln, Nebraska. We are at set point in set number one. Huskers on top 24-15 on the slide. Terrific up in the back row by the Huskers. Push outside, roll shot. Great pancake up there by Hunter Atherton to keep it, keep it alive. Now Atherton will set. Stiverens goes off the block and puts it away. Impressive set number one for this Nebraska Cornhusker squad, winning it 
over the 11th ranked Bruins, 25 to 15. Well, they played some good volleyball here in the first set. Definitely John Cook. <laughs> he would like them to play a little bit crisper, a little better on serve receive. But hey, when you get that first set under your belt, you can build off of that. So right now, Nebraska feeling pretty good about themselves. One more look at Stiverns taking it off the hands of the middle. And Nebraska goes up one set to none here in this weekend series against the UCLA Bruins. Along with Audrey Flaw, I'm Larry Putney. Good to have you with us here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. Another packed crowd, packed to the rafters. Standing room only as it always is here at the Devaney Sports Center. For two top 15 teams, an interconference battle between the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. Bruins coming in at 5-0, ranked number 11, and the Huskers ranked number 12, 3-2. Let's take a look at how Nebraska picked up the win there in set number one. Stiverens was terrific from the middle for the Huskers, just a freshman. You mentioned Audrey, 6-4. She moves really well along with that. Uh, yeah, that was Albright right there with a crossing play. And then we see Albright again from the outside. I just love her range, the shots that she has right now. Again, Albright was primarily a back row player. This year she sees a little bit of front row action and she's really rising to the occasion, doing a great job. Nebraska as a team hit 286 in set number one. You saw the highlights there of Annika Albright who had four kills on seven swings with no errors. You're looking now at Lauren Stiffens who had five kills, two errors on seven attacks. She hit 429. Between those two, both hitting above 500, that led Nebraska to almost 300 in set one. Right, and when Stiverns is getting the ball, you know that that ball is being passed or dug well enough for the setter to pump her the ball. And what I like about Stiverns is she's going for the edges of the hand, finding the way to score there, primarily trying to hit that right back corner. So future looks bright with Stiverns playing middle for Nebraska. Yeah, playing like somebody who might have sat behind an All-American for a year <laughs> and maybe picked up a thing or two, huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, she really does know what she's doing out there. <laughs> so volleyball on BTN presented by Tachikara. 25-15, Nebraska wins it in set number one. They held the Bruins, by the way, to under 100 hitting, .093 for the Bruins. The freshman Moser certainly was a bright spot out of Lakeville, Minnesota. She hit 500 with four kills to lead the Bruins, no errors. I think if you look carefully at the serve pass game though, that game within the game has got to go to Nebraska in the first set. UCLA's hitting percentage is pretty dismal right now and that's because all kinds of craziness going on. Their setter was not in system, was running all over the net, all over the court trying to get that ball. And we saw Nebraska really picking on the freshman, Mac May, especially when she was passing from that right back corner. So we'll see if that trend continues if they're going after Mac May here in the second set. So starting here at set number two for Nebraska, Michaela Fecky, Holman, Stiverens, Townsend, Kelly Hunter back out there to set. Kenzie Maloney in there at the libero for the Huskers. Serving for the Bruins, the setter, Sarah Sponsel. Michaela Fecky from that left side. She hits a heavy ball. Oh, she does. What an arm on that kid. Kelly Hunter tracking down a ball, setting it perfectly from about the 10 foot line. Her hands are so smooth, that ball just floats out to target perfectly. It's an easy ball to make contact with. Absolutely no spin on it. Kenzie Maloney now to serve. Talked about Fecky off the top of the broadcast. Unanimous preseason All Big Ten selection. She's a former honorable mention ABC All American was the MVP her freshman year in that national championship game. But somebody who's really transitioning to a very different role this year, playing six rotations, 
And that takes some effort, especially when you go to the back. Well, yeah, it takes effort. It takes stamina. It takes mental fortitude because she's going to get picked on. And trust me, every Big Ten coach is watching to see how she holds up here in serve receive. So, Becky, you know, that expanded role, it may seem like, oh, it's okay. She's a great player. Right. It's a huge responsibility to be on the serve receive pattern. Serve is long from Mac May. May, just a freshman, she leads UCLA in attacks, kills per set, aces, serves. Yeah. She's been dominant for you. That's right, Pac-12's freshman of the week, right out of the gate after week one, and the Gatorade player of the year for the state of Iowa. Down the line, great line shot by Ginny Moser, the other freshman. Now back to serve for UCLA, Kyra Rogers. Upset to Jazz Sweet. Throws it right in the campfire. Good job keeping it alive for the Bruins. Free ball here for Nebraska. Over on the outside to Sweet, a little tight to the net. She turns it into the kill. Sweet got stuck on that left pin. Becky was on the right pin. You see here, see Sweet there. Again, there really wasn't an opportunity for her to draw that arm back and swing. Ball was underset a little bit, so she tipped it. Really, ball control on UCLA's side of the net was not great on that play. So 4-3 here in set number two. Simo serves for the Bruins. Passes off a bit. Chased down by Hunter, who got in a good position and a nice cross kill. Yeah, we talk about passing for Fecky. She struggled on that particular serve-receive pattern there, right back. And again, Nebraska has the option of running at 6-2. Uh, it's a real difficult when you've got to run that with the lefties on the left pin, and Fecky really has to step up in passing when she's in that backcourt. On the slide, the kill by Gates. Gates very active early in set number one, picked up three quick kills. That's her fourth. She's now four kills and six swings. Bushler to serve for UCLA. Sweet right into the double block is shut down and Gates is there with the block. Right. For Nebraska, Kenzie Maloney bumps at that ball as Libero. A little bit tight, but the experience of a good hitter will allow you to do something with that ball, Jazz Sweet. Just going hard, low seam, and it results in a block ball. Another pass that was just off for Nebraska. Bruins with the first lead here of the match for UCLA at 6-5. May aggressive and right into the hands of Jazz Sweet. And May gets the best of that one. I love the battle. Freshman versus yeah. freshman. The future of both programs right there. Mac May winning on that particular rally. Just going hard and aggressive and finding a poor block in front of her and exploits it. Good look at downtown Lincoln, Nebraska, and here inside the Bob Devaney Sports Center, another sold out 8,000 plus crowd here at the Devaney. Born. Interconference battle between the Pac-10 and the Pac-12 and Big Ten. UCLA with the point out of the timeout extends that lead to three. And the Bruins now on a 5-0 run. 
Bruno kept that alive. Maloney with the bump set behind her, Albright off the top of the tape. May winds up, Stiverin's got a hand on it. They'll go right back to May again. May down the line, got the touch and the kill. Mac May coming alive here in set number two. Yeah, that's her third kill, but on 15 attempts. So right now her hitting efficiency numbers are not good, but despite that, big kill there for her team. Okay, Albright with the big swing with the solid block by Gates puts it inside the back line for a Bruin point. They've doubled up Nebraska here in set two. And that's where Albright sometimes shows her vulnerability, kind of new to that outside position, goes low seam, nothing but hands on that ball. Here in set number two, Bruins hitting percentage, hitting efficiency much better. They're hitting above 550 here in set two. There's Albright, took a little bit off that one, found it just inside the back line. Yeah, and that's really good when an outside hitter gets that hand-to-ball contact and is able to take a little bit of heat off it and place it. She knows that right back corner is open, and a nicely placed shot by Monica Albright. Tough serve there by Sydney Townsend, leads to a Nebraska point. The Huskers now on a 3-0 run. There is Sydney Townsend, the senior out of Lincoln, Nebraska, Pius 10th High School. Been a defensive specialist her entire career, along with a serve specialist. Swing on the slide. There was not a touch. It's long point Huskers. Yeah, offensively, UCLA not able to find the court. Here you see the ball hitting long, way long on the end line on Nebraska's side of the net. Chicken wing to keep it alive. Kinsey Maloney sends it over outside May. May gets the touch of the kill. That stops Nebraska's 4-0 run and a two-point advantage for the Bruins. I like how Nebraska released on the block. There was no other place that ball was going to go to the left side. But Mac May, 6-3, hit over top of the block, touching the block. And that, as you said, results in their 11th point here in the second set. That well, had one place to go, and that was the floor. Yeah. As Specky had a wide open shot. Well, that's the other little wrinkle to the offense. Take a look. She's backcourt, and she actually starts her first step as the setter is touching the ball. That's great rhythm. The ball is set low, really hard to defend on UCLA's side of the net. Nice tempo ball there by May. Shows some versatility. Rolls it over for her fifth kill. Yeah, Sarah Sponsor really holding the block. She pretended she was going to attack the ball, kind of swung her arms up and then set the ball. Opened up just a little bit of court for McNay on the left side. And then a nice little disguised roll shot drops. On the slide, Stibbons off the top of the block of McNay. And Stibbons with the kill. You know, Stibbons at 6-4, that high point of contact, really was vital and was what helped her score on that ball. So if she gets that ball high, she jumps well off that one foot on that slide. Boy, she's going to be really hard to stop. Oh, pass, three ball Huskers. Holman on the slide. Top of the tape slowed it up a bit. Good pass by Albright, right in rhythm. The timing for the middle there much better on the UCLA side than on the Nebraska side, and the Bruins with the point. Yeah, nice defensive get. When the left side blocker comes in to block the quick, there's a lot of open court in the left front area. Nebra or UCLA was not fooled. Defense played that ball perfectly. Good transition swing to score. Big kill for Bushler off the top of the block. Nebraska can't keep it alive. Bruins extend that lead back to three at 14-11. Well, here 
is May to serve. Beautiful delivery. She took a bad pass and made a phenomenal set. Good coverage there by Muno to keep that alive. Job defensively by both teams. Free ball here for the Bruins. Rosa had a good look at it, couldn't get down. But off the block goes Fecky, and Michaela Fecky wins maybe the longest rally of the match. Yeah, and Annika Albright defensively for Nebraska lines up perfectly, makes a great dig. Take a look at that. And then a good transition screen using the block for a point. You see Fecky's numbers, six kills, eight digs. Shank pass leads to the free ball. For Nebraska again, serving Mac May in that right back position seems to work every time, but you know what else is working every time? Is that middle attack for Nebraska, well done. Tip try there by Kyra Rogers. Does it clear, and Nebraska on another 4-0 run. With Hunter at the service line. Sweet, Fecky, and Holman up front. Nebraska's strongest front row. Sweet got the hand on it. Hunter, the quick to Holman. Good dig by Muno. The block and down on the Bruins side. Point Nebraska, what a swing by Fecky. Yeah, when Fecky has time to transition off the net, that kid is virtually unstoppable. She swings so heavy. A real pleasure to watch that kid on the left side. Huskers on a 5-0 run here in Lincoln. They lead it in set number two, 16-14 over the Bruins. Lauren Cook, John Cook's daughter, had just transferred from UCLA to Nebraska. The Huskers come out on top back at the old Coliseum. What a match. Yeah, I remember that match perfectly. How impressive was Lauren Cook oh. as a setter? It's almost like she had revenge <laughs> on her former team. So it was a pretty cool experience to see that battle there. Goes around the timeout, stops that Nebraska 5-0 run. Check that, it might we have a green card, so good opportunity here to talk about the replay system or the challenge review system as it's now referred to, the CRS. Right. Coaches, if they see a play that they believe was miscalled, they can put up a green card as Michael Seeley has just done. And so they're going to take a look at the touch on the block. Now the second referee or the down referee is the sole reviewer of this replay. It's really up to his discretion. And the key here is indisputable evidence. Right. Is it indisputable without a doubt? Can you have enough evidence to overturn? And so the call was no touch. Point Nebraska. Let's see if we can see a touch. Difficult to see there. Did you look for a finger that maybe pushes back. This might be a good shot right here. It looks to me that it goes over top of Fecky's hands. Now, we'll see what the ref sees, but... Yeah. So again, if the second referee or down referee determines that 
it's inconclusive, then the original decision stands. It must be conclusive evidence. You know, and I like this replay system. The game is so fast. Inevitably, you're going to miss some calls. And so the ability to review and get it right, I think, is really important. There was a survey conducted at the end of 2016 among head coaches in Division I and senior women's administrators. And last year, there were only, I believe, 14% of the schools using replay right. this year, that's going to drop to 8%. So coaches actually going away from mm -hmm. that, even though 60% of the coaches who used it said they liked it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just feel like you want to get the call right, especially in tight situations, but it does slow down the game a bit. So, not indisputable evidence. No touch. Point Nebraska. So that is now a 6 0 run for the Huskers. Lead now at three. Boy, terrific up. Can they keep it alive? No. Kill by Jazz Sweet. Jazz has such a quick arm swing. Nebraska extends it. 18-14. We were tied at 14. <laughs> Big swing by Fecky on the left side, just inside the line, and Nebraska continues the run. Yeah, what I'm seeing from the Cornhuskers right now is great backcourt defense lining up perfectly around a well-formed block. And then Fecky on transition, unstoppable. She sees what's available there, that hard cross-court short. Court hits right on the perimeter of the court. Tip back by Holman, kept alive by Muno. Hunter in the middle. You know, there again off the swing of Holman. That goes off the top of the block. Kinsey Maloney keeps it alive. Fecky, little roll shot back, and that is long, and that ends Nebraska's 8-0 run. So the Bruins tried to get back in this here in set number two, already down one set none. Yeah, what a great run by Nebraska. And I appreciate Fecky's attempt to try and hit. Three-quarter speed shot to the quarter. But they haven't stopped her big swing cross court yet, so I go with something else. Push behind her. Solo block. What a big block by Bushler, the senior. Well, Bushler coming down from that block gives it a huge fist pump. One on one, that is a great feeling as a blocker there. It looks like it's going to be a thunderous kill by Fecky. Bushler denying her that one. Serve is long from Kyra Rogers. So back in now for Rogers is Muno, the libero. Back to serve for the Huskers. The junior out of West Point, Iowa, Michaela Fecky. Becky with the service error. 2017. Talk about good errors and bad errors. It's a bad service error there when it goes to the bottom tape. And I know she's a better uh, server than that. Sometimes that ball just gets mishit on your hand. You're out of rhythm slightly. So a uh, Kind of an unusual error there by Michaela Fecky from the service line. Checking the rotation here for the Bruins to make sure they're in the proper rotation. So Simo now will go back to serve. A big block for the Bruins. That's Gates again. A little life here late for the Bruins. Try to get back in this at 2018. Direction from Ani Albright. Use the hands. A little tempo ball. And with Becky still in the backcourt, look to Nebraska to set that back row attack. Well, it's always nice to have a touches to keep it alive. Did not get on top of that and sit that sailing. 21 19. 
Nebraska, like you said, tons of touches keeping that ball alive, but you got to be able to transition and score. Albright really struggling on that attack. Becky Maloney, Albright in the back row for Nebraska. Good pass by Albright. Jazz Sweet off the top of the hands of Mac May and Sweet with the kill. Yeah, Sweet, her elevation is unbelievable. Definitely not playing like a freshman out there. The kid's got all American potential written all over her. And to have a strong right side attack in the game is so crucial to being a good team. Slide to Warren Stiverns. Stiverns taking off Sadisimo's head right down the line. Let's take a look at it again. She sees that line and boom. Oh, she got her hands up just in time. I thought it was a facial on Simo. 23 19, Nebraska just two away from going up two sets to none in this battle of top 15s. Well, when it comes to volleyball, BTN has you covered for the return of Big Ten play at America's Best Conference. We kick it off on September 20th with Northwestern at Purdue. Then on the 22nd, one of the Big Ten's best rivalries is renewed. These Huskers take on Penn State. You want to catch the return of Big Ten play on BTN starting September 20th. Boy, do we have a great year ahead of us in the Big Ten Conference. Absolutely. Take a look at... Uh... You said number 12 against number three yeah. later on in the month. Boy, Penn State really playing so well early this season. They kind of primed, ready to go, aren't they? So experienced. Everybody returns for the Nittany Lions. Outside, aggressive off the block and the kill by May. So out of the timeout. Coach Michael Seeley calls up his freshman's number, and she delivers. Just a freshman. Yeah, that's her sixth kill on 21 attempts. So she's starting to feel a little bit more of a rhythm right now. She struggled in set one and early part of set two. One-on-one -on -one swing by Albright. Nice job to keep that alive. Here's May off the block. Stiverns punches it across on the slide. Here's a free ball coming for Nebraska, but goes out of bounds. So that will bring up set point for the Huskers in set number two. On top, 24 to 20 on the 11th ranked UCLA Bruins. Hunter Atherton playing right back, so we're gonna see her setting from the back court should the rally be extended. Atherton pushes back. Left-handed swing from Sabo, not down. Quick to the middle. Stiverin's little joust at the net, kept alive. May tries the tip and got it. It was down by May. So what we're seeing from Nebraska right now is one of the things that they can do, they've got Hunter Atherton as another setter on the bench. They've got another dynamic right side attacker, so occasionally they're going to run into the 6-2, and now they've switched back. Kelly Hunter is back on the court. She's a front court player now, so a little shorter block on the right side pin for Nebraska, but nonetheless... Kelly Hunter is a good blocker. Just another wrinkle that Nebraska can kind of throw at a team, see how they can handle it. Second set point for Nebraska. That time a little tip over for Fecky, and Fecky delivers her ninth kill of the match and gives set number two to Nebraska. Yeah, Fecky, if she's one on one, Boy, you've got to play your defense really into the court because she's going to nail that hole. So Nebraska here at home at the Bob Devaney Sports Center takes the first two from the 11th ranked UCLA Bruins. Huskers have helped the Bruins to 103 hitting. 
Set number three coming your way from Lincoln in just a moment. Back into the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska for Big Ten Volleyball. The Huskers on top of UCLA, two sets to none, along with Audrey Flaw. I'm Larry Putney. It's been a, an impressive performance by Nebraska through two sets, led by a couple of players, Michaela Fecky with nine kills and Annika Albright with seven. Yeah, Fecky doing what she does, just these thunderous hits from that left pin, but she's also getting her share of swings in the backcourt. But look at that transition footwork getting all the way back, using the block, scoring all different ways. There's that back row attack. No block in front of her, so she's going to score every time. Monica, Monica Albright with seven kills in set number one and two. Yeah, you see her attacking from the backcourt, so Nebraska really trying to use both players when they're in the front and back, trying to keep that defense for UCLA guessing. But Albright, I really think she will become a little bit more comfortable in that role as the season goes on. She looks impressive here in the first two sets. UCLA hitting just 103. Is that Nebraska keeping them off balance from a serve perspective? Yeah, UCLA's passing game right now is really falling apart. So, you know, they really can't do much with their middles, their outsides. Trying to swing to score, but, you know, not always scoring unless they can get a, a wipe off the block. So unless that passing game gets elevated for UCLA, they're going to struggle offensively. So Nebraska on top here at the intermission. They lead it over the 11th ranked Bruin. Bruins Huskers on top. Two sets to none. We'll be back in Lincoln with set number three from the Bob Bandy Sports Center. Talent, not to mention a lot of offense, walked across the graduation stage for Nebraska last year. Take a look at the Ralston twins, first in kills and blocks. Andy Malloy, the transfer from Baylor, she was third on the team in kills. Justine Wong Arantes, all she's doing now is playing for the U.S. national team. <laughs> right. like that's, that's a lot of graduation. Yeah, and you know, much of the success that the Huskers had over the four years is because of the girls right there listed. They were just so talented, committed, the leadership that they had, but they're gone. So now comes the time for other kids to raise their game, come into the program and make their mark. And we're seeing some great freshmen doing just that for the Nebraska squad. They were the champs, national champs in 2015. One of the three national titles that John Cook has won while on campus at the University of Nebraska. Well, time now for our Tachikara on the floor. Here's a look at the starting lineups for the Bruins and the Huskers, Michaela Fecky. Ani Albright, the senior. Stiverance has been terrific tonight in her freshman year. Holman, the senior. Kelly Hutter leading the show from the center spot. And Cindy Townsend in the back row as the DS. So Nebraska on top, two to nothing. And now, one thing John Cook has mentioned early in the year is this is a very young team that hasn't quite learned how to finish yet. And we saw that early in the year against Florida and the match against Oregon. They were close late and just couldn't finish. This is a similar situation. Can you finish against a top 15 team when you're up two zip? Yeah, and some of that comes from just experience as a unit. So you've got some experienced players there, but the rhythm that this game demands of a team, uh, you know, that really sets teams apart from one another. So right now they're playing very very well. Uh, we'll see if they can maintain that rhythm in the third set. Their starting lineup is the same, and they're starting the same way with uh, Kelly Hunter in middle front. So same six on the floor, starting in the same rotation. So that definitely helps with the rhythm of the game. So serving for Nebraska will be Annika Albright, the senior out of North Aurora, Illinois. Tough serve, but handled by Muno. Free ball for Nebraska. Hunter on the side is different. It just misconnects. Neither team's going to be too impressed with that. Really. A free <laughs> right. ball going over typically is a point for the team that receives that free ball. So and John Cook just going, hey, you know what? We're going to just forget about that one. Let's start right now. Becky with the swing, good up by Muno. Out of the back 
Brown. Great job to get a hand on it by Sponsel to keep it alive. Brushed off the hands. And the kill by Bushler. There's a veteran. Yeah, that's where defenses can really frustrate another team. Nebraska firing a back row attack over to UCLA's side of the net, but they control the dig and then transition and score off a tip. And the service error. Back to serve for your husband. Kenzie Maloney will serve now for the Huskers. Libero out of Louisville, Kentucky. Taking over the role of Justine Wong Arantes. Swing is long there, and Justine Wong Arantes took over for Caleb Anwar. <laughs> so a couple of former Liberos back to back on this Nebraska team that played for Team USA. Yeah, kind of a strange sort of circle of life kind of thing <laughs> that's going on here at Nebraska. Caleb Anworth now on the bench for Nebraska. Service error by Maloney. You know, you talk about Caleb Anworth being a former libero and now a new player, Maloney, with that shirt on. So it's just a great comfort for a player to have somebody that you can talk to about the position. So I'm sure Kenzie Maloney relies on Caleb Anworth a lot for little tips yeah. as she goes along playing this position. We've been talking about Kayla Banworth. She led Nebraska, was Nebraska's all-time digs leader when she left the program. It just so happens that the person that followed up Kayla Banworth was Justine wong Arantes, who broke all of her records. But she played on the national team from 11 to 16, won a bronze in Rio with two other Huskers on that team, Jordan Larson and Kelsey Robinson were both on that team as well. And now she's on the bench beside John Cook, as you said, being a great mentor. Look at this, the assistant coaches. We've talked about the movement for Nebraska on the floor. How about off of the floor? Last year, they lost the two assistant coaches, Danny Busboom Kelly, who is now the head coach at Louisville, and Chris Thomas is now the, we'll see him in the Big Ten, he's the new head coach at Illinois. Yeah, and that is really just a testimony to what John Cook does here. He brings in great assistants, and then he lets them kind of develop a coaching style of their own, gives them the experience that they need to take on D1 head coaching jobs, and uh, I really do feel like both of those coaches are going to have a successful year for their programs. Seven Nebraska assistants under John Cook have gone on to be head coaches. Of course, Craig Stetter maybe Craig Stetter maybe one of the most prominent still at Kentucky. He made a terrific job at Kentucky. He came in last weekend into Nebraska and took on the Creighton Blue Jays, who are ranked nationally. And Skinner doing a great job with Kentucky. Kill from the left side. It's Jenny Moser. Talked about it earlier how the libero for UCLA is playing that right back position. She handles the middle attack. Nebraska threw her way with ease. Again, she's still lined up in that right back corner. Jazz sweet with another kill. <laughs> Going to serve now as another freshman for Nebraska, Haley Dinsberger, a freshman out of Malcolm, Nebraska. Kill there by Gates. Well, you can see how important that serve receive game is. Deep serve took Muno all the way back to the end line, but somehow she delivers a perfect pass up to her setter. And sponsor setting a first tempo attacker. Nice um, just swing there by the middle for UCLA. Once again, Stivers off the side of that middle block. So Stivers seems to be really comfortable running that push ball right there, like a 31, a B. She gets up as the setter's touching the ball, so it's hit very quickly off the setter's set. All 
Albright with the tip and down. Monica Albright picks up another kill. And the ball is set inside a little bit. The blocker on the right side moves in. You're going to see a lot of court there in the right front area to tip the ball into. And that time, even the speed that Zana Muno has wasn't fast enough to get her there. Albright having one of her better matches of the year. She's hitting 235, but those eight kills. Check, check that. 353 is what she's hitting. Eight kills by far her best match of the year. Well, the other thing that's impressive with Albright is the fact that she's getting some good touches on the block, and that's a new position for her. Mind you, she played that position in high school and in club, but you know, she hasn't had the reps that other people have had, so she's doing a really good job of just playing solid front court volleyball for the Huskers. Little high for Mac May, no touch point, Nebraska. The Huskers now on top by two here in set number three. UCLA came in undefeated, 5-0 on the year. Good quick reaction there by Townsend to get the hands up and the swing by Albright. That's a serious cross-court shot. Take a look at it again. Fast speed to the ball. And UCLA's block just does not react to where this ball is set. Inside, you want to take that ball cross court on the block. Huskers have come from behind here in set number three to take the lead. They're on top two sets to none and 10-7 here in the third. We'll be back in Lincoln for the rest of set number three. Volleyball on BTN is presented by Tachikara. We've got the ball. You bring the game. 10-7 Nebraska lead here in set number three. A 5-0 Husker run led to the timeout by Michael Seeley. Bruins had led this 7-6. No touch there, a bit high. And another point for the Huskers. Yeah, not what Seeley wanted out of the timeout for sure. Trying to go for that perimeter shot, but just way wide on that. So UCLA just really at a rhythm in their third set here. Good swing there by Kyra Rogers, the middle out of Roseville, California. We've talked a lot about Mac May being from Iowa, Dubuque coming here. Kyra Rogers' grandparents are here. She grew up in Des Moines, Iowa, so that's just you know a couple hours from here in Lincoln. Yeah. When she was 12, she moved out to California, so we have three or four players on the floor from Iowa. Pushed outside. Albright. Boy, when she winds up and gets a swing, she can deliver. Yeah, Kelly Hunter just giving her a great opportunity to score. She finds herself one-on-one -on -one here. Perfectly placed set, so jump set by Hunter. Pushing that ball quick to the outside allows Albright to really take advantage. A swing by Moser off the hands of Hunter. Moser with another kill. That's seven in the match for Moser. Trails only Mac May, so the two freshmen leading these Bruins. One with eight kills, the other with seven. Here is Mac May. Good pass by Albright. Hunter tried it on the second touch, wasn't there. Might be an indication that we're seeing a more healthy Kelly Hunter because she, I think she just might have attacked one time all year prior to that. Right, right. And you know what? And she's playing good volleyball, giving her hitters a great opportunity to score. But that time, a wipe off the block for UCLA gives them the ball and the point. Part of it was she was playing the 6-2. She should have been attacking the back row, but right. still hasn't been much offense from her. Looking for the touch there as the team turned to John Cook. And John is going to utilize his green card and say there was a touch there. Check to see if there was a touch. Let's 
So again, the second referee will go to the monitor and look for the indisputable evidence to see if there was a touch. The call on the floor was no touch, point UCLA. Each coach is allowed three challenges per match. And once that challenge is lodged, that takes away one challenge, whether they're successful or not. Now, first glance at that, it looked like a touch to me. It's one of those instances where maybe you can read the change in direct, movement or yeah. direction of the ball. Yeah. Right? And you could see it there. See if that's indisputable enough for our R2. Another good look where you can see a slight change. Yeah, some of these are just like yeah. micro touches. Right. It's so difficult. Oftentimes, right at that point of contact, if it's blurred slightly, it, you know, is a disadvantage to take a good look at it. So the R2 is only looking for the touch. If you were to see a hand in the net or a ball out, right. that would not be reviewable. Only what the coach is challenging is actually reviewable under the situation. Correct. So he's communicating with the scorer's table. And they will say it is inconclusive. The call will stand. So UCLA will get the point. It's a good call by the R2 on the floor. Fair enough. Yep. That will put Mac May back to serve now. Bruins back to within one here in the third, 12-11. Oscar's looking for this sweep, and of course, these two teams play again tomorrow night. Kind of a rare doubleheader. We don't see that often during the college volleyball season, but two teams that are highly competitive, and I think you'd rather face the same team again and make some adjustments and see how you adjust night after night than you would face a maybe different team. Right, absolutely. I think both of these teams, it'll be an interesting uh, scouting report, quick turnaround, see what adjustments can be made. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of volleyball left here, even though UCLA is down by two sets. Don't rule them out. They are a good team. The back row, Albright with a big swing, high off the rebound. Townsend kept it alive. Fecky readjusts, got a hand on it. Albright back room, good up, pushed out to the pin. Deep quarter, just long off the hand of Fecky. Point for the Bruins. Well, Fecky was going for that shot, just a real neat finesse shot, should have landed in. What about Albright in the back court? Wow, just right. really extending, she's got such range. Taller kid, long arms, able to dig a lot of balls outside of her body. And down. There's the kill for Kelly Hunter. That's her first kill of the season. Well, good for her. <laughs> Setters love to hit or tip. So she's brought inside and again, middle blocker, left side blockers inside the court. There's that area right there, very close to the net, about three feet from the net to uh, score on a tip. Service error, 14-13. Back in now for the Bruins is Savvy Simo. Simo back to serve. At the top of the net. Two touches called on the Bruins. Point for the Huskers. A beach move defensively there by UCLA, but the ball spun out of the setter's hands. Sponsel, you see her there, number 12. That, of course, is not allowed, so side out and point to Nebraska. Kayla 
Lesky with a double, double already tonight and an ace there. That's the ninth ace of the season for Fecky. She leads the Huskers in aces. Well, Fecky's point of contact on the serve is high, and it actually goes down and drops right in front of the passer there for UCLA. Nice, aggressive serve by Fecky. Holman and Jazz Sweet there on the block for Nebraska. setting a quick on perfect passes. Yeah, setting middle when you're off the net, maybe being a bit more tricky with it as opposed to it being scripted. Hey, I'm gonna jump set and the middle's there and I'm setting middle. Really makes it easier for the middle block on the other side of the net. Hunter back to Jazz Sweet one on one and Sweet with another kill. You know, Sweet does such a good job of taking that big approach and taking advantage of a block that might be not so perfectly formed. So she has shown that she's got all kinds of shots, tooling the block just being one of them. Tough serve by Ginsburger brought back in. Sweet got a hand on it, then readjusts and is blocked. Blocked on the left side. Combo blocked by Sponsor and Gates. Well, that time UCLA's block was quick to read. Great lateral movement by the middle blocker for UCLA. And then the distance from the setter to Sweet was very, very short. So UCLA, perfect read on that play. And Sweet gets that one on one opportunity puts it down that's her ninth kill of the match yeah and that's all kelly hunter there giving her not just a nice set but the tempo of the set is really low to the pin so really hard for that middle blocker on the other side of the net to speed up to the set that uh hunter is setting the ball right now and the hitting error Oscars the first to 20 here in set number three, and that will have Mike Sealy take a timeout here in the third. Nebraska on top, two sets to none, trying to close it out here in Lincoln. Time now for our State Farm State of Success. Michaela Fecky with a very successful night, 11 kills, hitting 212 digs. That's a double-double. Her fourth double-double in six matches this season. Yeah, she's been steady all night long. And again, those 11 kills is impressive. But what I'm really impressed with is her back row play, not only on serve receive, she's digging some good balls and then making herself available to transition swing. And I like the tempo that she's running that back row attack, taking her first step when Hunter is setting that ball. So Becky doing what she does and just being a leader there for the Nebraska Huskers. Townsend to serve, Nebraska on top by four here in set number three, already with a two sets to none lead. On the slide, Rodgers, push back out. Albright reaches back to keep it alive. Hunter chases it down, feeds back row, Fecky. Good up there by Bushler in the back row. Albright took a little off that and right between the block, the baseball worked. Albright, that's her 11th kill of the night. She has been spectacular from that left pin. She 
ties her season high with 11 kills. So good job, Veronica Albright. Add those 12 digs, and she has her fourth double-double of the year. <laughs> Terrific swing there from the freshman, Moser. It was just inside that outside block, not quite wide. Found the room. All right, with another kill. That's 12 now. Found that deep corner. Yeah, just the vision to see what is open, and her hand-to-ball contact is something that, you know, allows her to change up the speed of her shot. So she takes that ball, roll shots at deep corner. You know, it's hard to be everywhere on defense, so a swing like that on the left side is so valuable. If you can move that ball around, you're going to keep that defense guessing. Tough serve by Albright, brought back in. New center now into the game for Nebraska. Hunter Atherton, the freshman out of Prospect, Ohio. She played for Mintonet Sports Volleyball Club. She's playing with that club. Oh, yeah, that's the club that I work for. So, <laughs> yeah, so Hunter's been coming in at the tail end of all three of these sets to run that 6 2, kind of give a different look. They've got a really good lefty, another good lefty that uh, has been playing that right side when. Hunter Atherton comes in to set. Off the block and out. Fecky is shut down. A point for the Bruins. Check that point. Nebraska did land in. Or brushed the antenna off the ball. So Nebraska two away. Kenzie Maloney to serve. Service goes longer. Are you surprised here, maybe a bit, by the manner in which Nebraska has gone about these first three sets? Well, I UCLA really... came in undefeated. Nebraska had been struggling. Yeah, you know, UCLA is hitting their... Their season low was 23%. Tonight, they're hitting .094. So, really struggling offensively, the Bruins are tonight. Good feet in the middle there. Madeline Gates. He came out of the gate real strong tonight. Had three kills in that first set. He's kind of gone quiet. That's just her seventh. Yeah, so this is a great test for Nebraska right now. Can they turn this around? This is a crucial point here. And they get a good pass and a good swing. The pass, got the swing, got the kill. Becky delivered it. 13 kills for Michaela Fecky, and that puts Nebraska at match point at 24-20. And the swing from Missouri is just long. And Nebraska has swept the Bruins. Impressive outing for Nebraska tonight. 25-15, 21, and 20. A 3-0 sweep of the 11th ranked team in the country. Yeah, that is a, a really nice win for Nebraska. You know, you feel like Kelly Hunter is feeling better. She's doing a great job of setting the offense for Nebraska. So this Nebraska team really rolling. And I was so impressed with Jazz Sweets, the freshman on that right side. She's going to be fun to watch this season. So Nebraska takes down the Bruins on this Friday night. These two teams back at it tomorrow. It will, will be interesting to see what kind of adjustments UCLA makes. because Volleyball on BTN presented by Tachikara. Tonight we've got a terrific one. Number 11, Nebraska hosting number 12, UCLA. And hello again, everyone. I'm Larry Putney. Along with Audrey Flaw, great to have you with us tonight here from the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. Two teams who traditionally are at the top of the rankings, UCLA and Nebraska. But Nebraska going with a bit of youth this year. UCLA, they've got a terrific senior coming back for her final year. Yeah, Riley Bushler, she is poised and confidence has started all the matches here for UCLA, not just this year, but in her career. She has a left side, powerful swing, and she plays six rotations. All-American talent will definitely be tracking her numbers tonight. 
absolutely a transition year for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They lose the Twins. Katie and Amber are gone. Justine wong has moved on to Team USA, trying to fill some very big holes. And they're going to look to Michaela Fecky to get that done. Yeah, Michaela Fecky is starting off her junior season with the Huskers in her typical way, getting big numbers and being that leader on the floor. Cook has asked her to step up, be a six rotation player, so she's going to be in serve receive. We'll see how she handles that difficult role. Volleyball tonight on BTN, we've got a great one. Two top 15 teams. It's Nebraska and UCLA from Lincoln. Back in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Bob Devaney Sports Center, where tonight John Cook and his Huskers ranked number 12 nationally will take on the 11th ranked UCLA Bruins, who have not lost in the year, coming in at 5 0 out of the Pac 10. Let's take a look at the starting lineups then for the Bruins. The senior, we mentioned her off the top, Riley Bushler, the outside hitter from Del Mar, California. Mac May, just a freshman, another freshman, and Ginny Moser. Kyra Rogers, Madeline Gates, Sarah Sponsel. The starting lineups for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Tonight, Michaela Fecky, the junior, will lead the way on the outside along with Annika Albright. Senior Brianna Holman in the middle along with the freshman Lauren Stevens. Sydney Townsend will be in the back row as the DS. And Kelly Hunter getting the start tonight as Nebraska moves out of that 6-2 that they've been playing in in the last two weekends to a more true 5-1. They're going to test the shoulder tonight of Kelly Hunter to see how that responds over the last week. Yeah, absolutely. Kelly Hunter, the captain, floor leader on the court. The offense will look pretty crisp if she is playing at 100%. She's been starting every year here for Nebraska, a standout player. There's a look at John Cook in his 18th season, just two games ago, picked up his 500th career win at Nebraska. Now a career record of 502 and 67. The Huskers will start it off. Serving the back row, Annika Albright. Pushed outside. Kept alive for the Huskers. Fecky with a roll shot in the middle. Terrific pancake up, keeping it alive. Tip shot, but Fecky is there. Stedman's in the middle with a nice touch shot. Stedman finds the open floor. Nebraska up early. Let's take a look at Michael Seeley. Michael's in his eighth season overall, 169 and 65. Former UCLA grad, played for the Bruins back in the mid-90s, was a terrific setter, one of the top setters in UCLA history. Won a national championship, co-captain, over pass, and Fecky puts it down, but kept alive. Free ball here for Nebraska. Hunter will push out to Fecky. Up, no, 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 no. Off the block, Nebraska up early here, two zip. Well, Fecky doing a really good job there of exploiting a block that wasn't formed perfectly. The middle blocker for UCLA reaching out to the pin. Fecky being that veteran outside, see those hands and just wipes the ball off. On the slide goes cross court. One hand by Townsend cannot keep it alive. And the kill by the middle for the Bruins, Madeline Gates. UCLA can pass well. Madeline Gates will be very effective tonight. Really quick on that slide to that right pin. It's all back to serve now for the Bruins is the junior libero, Zana Muno. Muno having a terrific season, averaging better than five digs per set. Just terrific numbers for Muno. And there's another one right there, the pancake up. Into the net call on the Bruins, point for the Huskers. Well, this is where some of those little errors will come back to haunt you. UCLA does get that pancake, but turns into an overpass, which results in an easy point for Nebraska. So here's Kinsey Maloney now to serve for Nebraska. Small task for Maloney. All she has to do is replace <laughs> Justine Wong Arantes, the former All American for the Huskers, now playing on Team USA. Just outside, Albright there, quick run in the middle. And there is Nebraska's senior middle, Brianna Holman with the kill. And Brianna Holman does an exceptional job there of cutting the ball back. Look at this defensive play, roll shot easily handled by Nebraska. And then that cut shot goes off the blocker's hands. Nice point for Nebraska. Really, Aubrey can't understate the importance of having Kelly Hunter back. Certainly, the future is bright for Hunter Atherton, who stepped in in her place. But having a senior out there and her absence over the first two weeks, and even 
absence in practice because of that shoulder injury that she had has been is really detrimental to the improvement of this Husker team. Right, and when your leader goes down, it, there's just an emotional void on the court. And so everybody here is happy to see Kelly Hunter uh, leading the offense for the Huskers. She really pushed her hard this week during practice. She set almost exclusively on the A side with Nebraska just to see how that shoulder would respond. She's out there. Coach Cook said earlier this week, not sure she can go back-to-back -back nights, so you never know. You may see the 6-2 back tomorrow night or even yet this evening, depending on how it responds. And there's a big response from Fecky on the outside. On the slide, here's Holman off the block. Running up by Muno. And that's what they've seen all year out of Muno. Back row attack. Monica Albright with the kill. Monica Albright. Crowd loves her and I love her. She is a great all-round player and this year she's swinging from the back court. You're gonna see her swinging from the front court, but look at that hit. Right to the right back corner, going deep perimeter. Love that shot. Albright, somebody who came into Nebraska expecting to always be maybe a back row player, but she really developed her offense to the point where now she's a six rotation player. She's been there early on. Look at the captain this year. Aggressive swing by Mac May. Nebraska's block is there. First time we've called Mac May's name. She's an outstanding freshman for the Bruins. Another look at that swing in the block by the Huskers. Yeah, Mac May is going to be facing this huge block all night. So she's going to have to try to find some shots here, or maybe her setter, uh, Sponsel, will find a way to get her one on one, maybe move her around a little bit in that serve receive pattern. Jazz sweet with the swing from that right side. They'll go the other way. Tip try. Sweet with good coverage. Here's Fecky, pushes it off the hands, kept alive. And the push the other side by Ginny Moser. And Moser, the freshman out of Lakeville, Minnesota, with the kill. Well, this is a great shot for a freshman. She sees the hands, tries to do something with the ball, decides to tip it at the last minute, push it off the block. So very great composed shot there by Moser. Serve now from Mac May. Touch from Jazz Sweet, and there's a look at Sweet, the lefty swinging from the left-handed side. Right, so when she is playing that left front position on serve received, she's gonna have to swing from that left pin. The ball's gonna have to cross her body in order for her to swing. That time, she tried to get her feet around it, ball was under set a little bit, managed to score on a tip shot. How difficult is that for a lefty to swing from the left-hand side? Well, it depends. I've seen a few very good left-handed players have absolutely no problem swinging from that left pin. It just depends on if the setter can push that ball all the way out and what kind of shots that lefty has. Right now, Sweet is probably developing those shots from that left pin. Uh, tremendous athlete, so we'll see if she can step up her game with that left pin on server seat. There's Ani Albright with the kill for Nebraska. Huskers take the 8-4 lead here in set one. Here's a look at Haley Dinsberger for Nebraska. She's just a freshman, defensive specialist out of Malcolm, Nebraska. Aggressive swing off the block and the kill by Bushman. Back in now to serve for UCLA comes Savvy Simo. Simo, defensive specialist, sophomore. Primarily defensive specialist and a serve specialist. Hunter pushes to Albright off the block. Good tip to keep it alive. A little misconnection there between Hunter and the freshman Lauren Stevens. Well, you can imagine being out of the uh, practice rotation for a while. That rhythm between the setter and middle is going to be off a little bit. So I know Kelly Hunter is going to be upset that she didn't connect with her middle, but that will come with time. Bushler with the big block and UCLA right back in this at 8-7. Well, watch this young lady get up. That swing block technique, forehands reaching over, but the block was all Bushler there. It's 
difference. When Nebraska's in system and they can get the middles, it will be, they'll be so much more effective. Stiffen's a good-looking freshman. Yeah, a better rhythm there between the setter and the middle. And then when she's one-on-one, -on -one, going for the edges of the hands is always the way to go as a middle attacker. On the slide, another kill for Madeline Gates. I'll tell you what, I am impressed early on here by Sarah Sponsel, the setter for UCLA. She's doing a good job of moving forward, setting the ball back. Doesn't have a ton of experience yeah. as a setter, and yet you would never know it. Great hands, great feet. Sponsel, the transfer from Loyola Marymount, where she spent the first three years of her career as an outside hitter, almost exclusively an outside hitter, didn't have much time setting at all. And here she is after the transfer of their top setter. That's right, and you can see her calling the plays for her team, and she's just playing with a ton of confidence. Real nice to see. Good solo block there by Kelly Hutter. Then on the tip try, coverage provided there. Mike Townsend, Nebraska doesn't get it down. Still alive for the Bruins. Nice job defensively by both squads out of the back row. The swing, and the attack error gives the point to Nebraska. Well, Maloney really saved that point. The libero for Nebraska making a great dig, getting her platform low to the ground, popping that ball up so they could do a transition attack that ended up scoring. So good job by Kenzie Maloney, the libero for Nebraska. Kill on the left side, there's Mac May, a freshman from Dubuque, Iowa. Out of that terrific Dubuque Wallet program. I'll take a look at how deep she starts her approach, and then she elevates so well. Macme is 6'3", so not only does she jump well, but she just has a great frame. And there you see her blocking that ball, too. So good job, not only as an offensive player, but seals the net defensively as well. She had a terrific outing against 20th ranked Hawaii a weekend or two ago. 18 kills, nine digs, three aces. Stiverns on the slide. Well, Stiverns is showing her versatility. Ran a couple plays in front, now running a slide. 6'4 kid, so wow, great size for volleyball. Down the line, right at McKinsey. Maloney couldn't handle it. And that was Kyra Rogers for UCLA. The tempo of the offense for UCLA is very quick. So the key thing for both of these teams is what team can stay in system more often than the opponent. They can run a fast offense. It will be to the team's advantage. We're seeing great swings here on both sides of the net. Good up there by Muno. On the slide, Holman got a touch and a kill. Brianna Holman, another one of those seniors that will be looked at for leadership in a very young Nebraska team. Of course, she transferred from UCLA two years ago, sat out her first year. The year that Nebraska won the national title, she sat and watched from the bench, then came back last year, and along with Rolfson, created a terrific set of middle blockers for Nebraska. Huskers like what they have with this set of middle blockers as well with the freshman Stiblings. Wide open swing, and that kill from the left side by Moser had a one-on-one, -on -one and she did not miss that advantage. Now, and right now, Nebraska is going after number 14 on serve received, Mac May, the freshman. But she has responded beautifully, takes that platform right to target, and Nebraska, or I'm sorry, UCLA in system on that serve received pattern. A good serve there by May. Nebraska in system, got it to Holman, who could not terminate. Swing wide, no touch. And the Huskers up by three at 15-12. A tight one here early on. 11th ranked UCLA, number 12, Nebraska.
UCLA fans made the trip here to Lincoln, Nebraska for this showdown. Crystal and Robert May. It wasn't too far of a trip for them. They're, they live in Dubuque, Iowa. Their daughter, Mac May, part of that terrific Dubuque Wallert program. In fact, Mac May actually camped here at Nebraska two or three times during her high school years. So many of these terrific volleyball players go to camps all over the country. This right. happened to be a, a close one for the Mays. That's right. And uh, I know that Nebraska tried to get her to come. <laughs> uh, so they could have, have easily been wearing a red shirt right now. But they decided UCLA was the place for their daughter. Mac May doing an outstanding do job her freshman year with the Bruins. We saw Crystal and Robert there, Mays' parents. There's Jazz Sweet, just a freshman, the future right side for this Husker squad. Yeah, Jazz Sweet being a lefty, this is her strong side, but look at the gaping hole in that block. She sees the court and goes for that cross-court shot where there was lots of open space for her to hit at. Michael May takes a timeout after Nebraska out of that last timeout, rattles off two straight points, including, as you said, a great open attack for Janesha or Jazz Sweet? I think it might be the best name in collegiate volleyball, <laughs> although I think number four for ne Nebraska, Sammy Slaughter, I would say that's a pretty good name too. The uh, the radio broadcasters that follow this Nebraska team, they're going to have fun over the next few years. Oh. Sweet and Slaughter. Sweet Slaughter, yep. <laughs> BT and has you covered for the return of Big Ten play in America's best conference. We kick it off September 20th with Northwestern at Purdue. Then on the 22nd, one of the Big Ten's best rivalries is renewed. These Huskers take on Penn State. Catch the return of Big Ten play on BTN starting September 20th. It's just going to be another terrific year in the Big Ten Conference. Eight teams in the top 25 right now. It's uh, another loaded year in the Big Ten. Yeah, we talk about how from top to bottom this conference is just so tough. Week in and week out, you've got to bring your A game. And right now, being preseason, we're getting a chance to see some other conferences. But right. take a look at that AVCA poll. Minnesota number one. They've got a tough test this weekend, taking on Texas. Serve kept alive off the scorer's table. Hunter with the quick to Holman. Nice job keeping it alive again. We see Muno back there. Well, unfortunately, yeah, it was a, a double contact on that third contact that was an attempt to set the ball over the net. It's a great first dig, second dig, and then third dig was, or third contact was sloppy for UCLA. 3-0 run right now for Nebraska. Off the antenna, the kill by Bushler. Off the touch and the antenna, so point to the Bruins. Well, Nebraska knows that that ball is going to go outside to Bushler, but Bushler's experience, her confidence, she just swings hard and high, and that allows her to score. Boy, great thumb down, wrist away by Jazz Sweet, found the opening on the kill. Yeah, that's an impressive swing. She elevates so well, and what she does when the ball's in the air is vital. That ball is being passed to the setter. She's coming all the way deep past that 10-foot line and then explodes in on her approach. Sweet this year hitting 343 on the year through her first five collegiate matches. Stiverance. Right off the side of the hands of Gates and another kill for Stiverance. It's been a couple times that Stiverance has taken the ball and wiped it to the right side of UCLA's court. So we'll see if UCLA makes any adjustment, maybe force her to hit to the left back corner, see if she's able to do that. Big solo block. Jazz sweet. No blocking seems to be the skill that most freshmen struggle with. Jazz Sweet, there's no struggle here. She lines up perfectly and then presses to the middle of the court. That's a big point for Nebraska. Take a look again. Swing blocking, 
reaching out, then back in. Our team celebrates. It's a wonderful block by Jazz Sweet. Bruins will take the timeout. Nebraska four away from set number one here in Lincoln. Still in set number one here in Lincoln. UCLA trailing Nebraska 21-13. Huskers jumped out to the quick start, have not looked back. Jumping out to that eight point lead. Huskers hitting 294 here in set number one. UCLA struggling, hitting under 100, just 94. And you see why they're with that pass on serve receive. It's gonna be critical for them to clean that up if they wanna try to compete here with the Huskers. Albright gets the kill there, her fourth kill here in set number one on five swings. Check that four kills on six swings without an error for Albright on the left side, hitting 667. Clearly her best set of the year. Out of the back row, rolled shot by Fecky is not by the floor. Nebraska's block is there. Good coverage by the Bruins to keep it alive. And that was just pushed off the block. Another smart play by the freshman, Moser. Well, the rally was extended there, which was nice to see the play going back and forth. Some big saves on UCLA's side of the net to keep the ball alive. You can see how that ball goes off Albright's hands and out of bounds. Two really good looking freshmen on the Bruins side in Moser and May. Sweet out of system. Muno keeps it alive. There's a swing by Spotsel, the center. They get a touch, no touch for Nebraska. And it's pretty interesting and should be noted where the libero for UCLA is playing right now. She's playing right back, and you don't typically see that. Look at Nebraska's side of the net. Maloney plays left back. So right now, just a strategic way of playing defense around the block. UCLA putting that libero in the right back corner. Complements the block that they're throwing up as well. Joust at the net there, back and forth. Both teams trying to get in system and finally put down by Bush. You know, there's something about uh, learning how to play ugly. <laughs> and it's really something that teams train because not all the time is it going to look crisp. And in that particular rally, you can see, hey, you just got to keep the ball alive and third contact try and get the most aggressive swing you can get on it. That's exactly what that rally was. So service error will bring it to their feet here in Lincoln. Nebraska looking to take set number one, leading it here 24-15. Quick substitution coming in for Nebraska, our first look at Aneshka Zabo. And now Hunter Atherton is in. So welcome in here to Lincoln, Nebraska. We are at set point in set number one. Huskers on top, 24-15 on the slide. Terrific up in the back row by the Huskers. Push outside, roll shot. Great pancake up there by Hunter Atherton to keep it, keep it alive. Now Atherton will set. Steverins goes off the block and puts it away. Impressive set number one for this Nebraska Cornhusker squad, winning it over the 11th ranked Bruins, 25 to 15. Well, they played some good volleyball here in the first set. Definitely John Cook. <laughs> He would like them to play a little bit crisper, a little better on serve receive, but hey, when you get that first set under your belt, you can build off of that. So right now, Nebraska feeling pretty good about themselves. One more look at Stiverns taking it off the hands of